All right, hope everyone's doing wonderful today. Today what I got in stores, actually me doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna be replacing my brake drum, the, the pads, the springs, and even the cylinder inside, and I wanted to make a video to kind of help anyone who ever wants to do this project and just show you how to do it and kind of show you step-by-step -step way of how I'm gonna do it. Uh, these are kind of the tools you're gonna use today. You definitely don't have to have everything here. It does make your life easier. If you do have access to all of these, if not, you can get away with simpler tools. You're definitely going to want a, a car jack. You definitely want a jack stand just to support the weight of the vehicle. You want to have whatever brake fluid your vehicle uses. Definitely check your owner's manual. You want to have some brake clean just to clean off everything. I like to have some penetrating oil to really kind of get into those rusty bolts in case they're kind of stuck there. I definitely like to spray everything the night before, or if not, at least a couple hours before or an hour before you start working on it. I like a pair of gloves so you don't like beat up your hands so much. Definitely some towels. Those are some older ones from the one yesterday. It does make your life easier if you do have these special tools. These are made for like uh, brake drums and stuff. Spring tool right here to help pull the springs because they could be tight and to kind of get the springs off. This kind of helps put on uh, the hold down springs. You can get away with just like pliers so you don't absolutely need these. An impact drill is nice and some sockets. If you don't have this, uh, you can use just like a ratchet. And uh, it is nice to have a torque wrench because you definitely want to torque down things to spec. So I do say don't skimp out on that and get a torque wrench. Uh, you got the brake pads, you got the cylinder itself, you got the brake drum. I actually did paint my brake drum, just the outside of it. Uh, I, I taped up everything so the inside and the edge isn't painted. I just wanted it to stay uh, rust free and everything. I do like some anti seize uh, lubrication right there. I think it's great for the bolts and stuff. You need the spring kit itself. Um, I like to have a container for the bolts. Uh, this is just another thing to hold the bolts. And I do like to also print off uh, anything. This is from my like service manual right here. It kind of tells you the process and gives you diagrams of everything. It tells you the torque specs because you definitely don't want to skimp out on that like right here. It tells you how, much, how many foot pounds or newton meters to tighten everything down to. So definitely you don't want to skimp out on that because you want to do it correctly without like breaking the bolt or anything. A makeshift little bleeder valve and then a bucket to catch all of the fluid and stuff. This is gross from yesterday. So that's pretty much all you're going to need for this job. Next thing we're going to do, let's just jack up the car and uh, take off the tire. Alright, I'm just going to go ahead and push the jack where I want it to be. And let's get this going. And it's off the ground. You can tell because the tires can spin freely. I'm going to grab this jack stand and place it inside of here. Let's see. You can hear the puppy in the background. There we go. And I'm just going to literally, I want just this side to be raised. The other side, it's going to kind of, when I put it down, it's going to kind of go like this. Because I want this tire touching on this side. So this one uh, won't spin, makes it a little bit easier to work on. And I already got stuff on me. So, let's back this up. And I'm going to lower it very slowly. There we go. Now it's being supported by the jack and the jack stand perfectly well. Very cool. Nice and safe. You can see I put it right under there. All right, next step, let's take off that tire. All right, let's take off this tire. I am working on a 2000 Jeep Wrangler today, but most of these brake drum systems are pretty similar. So I'm gonna pop off a little cover, and then let's go ahead and take these off. Makes your life a lot easier if you have one of these. And I do have one of these locking ones. These are kind of a pain, but there we go. The tire is off. I like to put my stuff in a little container. Just nice to have it there. And the tire is off. I do have this kind of adapter right here. This is kind of like extender. I will zip this off real quick too. Your car or vehicle probably won't have this. Oh. 
There we go. And now, we just got the brake joint showing. Let's do the next step. Okay, now what we gotta do, I forgot, you might want a hammer, but hopefully this won't come up, this will come off easily. I don't know how, what it really, let's just see. Yeah, this one you just kind of wiggle it back and forth. If, you, if you're having trouble getting it off, get yourself a small little hammer uh, and just kind of hit it with a good length, good strength on the sides and see if it breaks it loose a little bit. Um, don't want to hit these kind of hub bolts because that's not good. You definitely want to bend those, but actually mine's coming off pretty good. And you can see, wow, this actually, this is broken. Um, that's not good. <laughs> so good thing we're fixing this. I think that's my uh, my adjuster, my automatic adjuster that pushes these out. Uh, it's uh, broken. Yeah. You can see inside of here is also like brake dust powder. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to spray it down with the, the brake clean. Okay, now got my bucket to catch all the brake clean. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and just spray the whole thing down. Get off all any of that dust or anything like that. I pretty much used a full one yesterday on the other brake drum. So today I'm probably going to use uh, most of this, if not all of it. There you go. That is like the first initial kind of spray. You can see it's just like dripping a bunch of dark, nasty color fluid from all that brake dust and everything. So the next thing we're going to do, we want to take pictures of this to make sure that we know the layout of everything. It's also good to have your kind of printout of your diagram. I can see it. Kind of like uh, this right here. But it's also good to actually take physical pictures yourself. So that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab my phone and just go around and take pictures of everything. I'm actually taking pictures of everything. Kind of want to know how the spring is all laid out. Get down there. All right, now that we have some pictures, the next thing to do is we can start taking off some stuff. It also helps if your bucket doesn't leak. I'm pretty sure my bucket is leaking because it's just leaving the stuff everywhere. Yeah, so get a bucket that doesn't leak and it'll help a lot. And the brake clean does have a little bit of smell, but yeah, it's always good to wear a mask and always wear safety goggles whenever you're messing with these springs since they are on there pretty tight, so be very careful with that. All right. So I'm actually going to be using uh, this tool right here. I actually want to remove, uh, I'm just going to remove these white ones first, these big white springs here. Um, you can also remove these ones if you want, but I want to remove these white ones first and I'll remove these, uh, these kind of sport coils right here. These ones actually hold the pads on there. But if you have like a brake tool like this on the end of it, this kind of weird shaped thing, you actually put it on the post right here. And supposedly, if you turn it, It'll help pop off the spring, in theory. Like so. So if I can get this one as well. Easier said than done. These things are under a bit of tension. Definitely don't want to get your finger pinched in there. I might have to grab a screwdriver or something. Come on now. I don't know why it's being difficult. Come on now. Off and off, and then let's remove this part right here. Can't believe it's just like broken. Good thing we're replacing this. And when you take off pieces, you want to kind of remember the order that you did it. So I'm actually going to like set these down in like a fake 
representation of the drum as I take off the pieces. So I got those springs off, so this thing actually is getting ready to start coming apart. This tool right here, this kind of like screwdriver looking thing with a strange end, it's actually meant for these. If you look real close, uh, there's like a slot. You want to push these in, then rotate them, and then it'll pop out and that pin will, will fit down that slot right there. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Get my camera to stay. Take this tool, push it in. Easier said than done, but... You want to also have your finger on the back of uh, the drum brake. If you come around the back, you can see this little metal pin here. You want to push that down, otherwise it's going to keep rotating. So let's go ahead, put my finger on the back of that pin, push in. There we go. And it just came out. And then the pin in the back will go ahead and pop out. There you go. I'm going to set that down, kind of in a mock position. Again, I'm going to do it on the right side. There we go. And now the, the, the pads themselves are loose. And then we don't need those tools right now. This will literally just come off. So these are the old ones, they're off, and I'm actually gonna just leave these parts on because I'm replacing this whole thing. And I'll set it down like so. Let's see, just like this. Got those springs there. This part here, I don't know where that yellow spring went. This part you're gonna reuse. So if you want, you can uh, kind of clean it up a bit with a wire brush. And then now that we have this off, this is the emergency brake. Uh, I want to spray this whole thing down with brake clean again. And then after that, we're going to remove the cylinder and replace that. And be very careful when removing the cylinder in case the back is rusted on. So real quick again, I've sprayed it many times. I'm going to hit it with some uh, penetrating oil to kind of loosen that up. And uh, if you can see over here, I kind of have how the old brake drum was set up just for representation to help me remember. And also a picture, so it shouldn't be too hard. Next thing I'm gonna do, spray this off some brake clean and go from there. All right. And I forgot to mention, little wire brushes are a wonderful thing too. So much like dirty brake water. All right, I'm gonna take a couple more minutes and clean this off, and then we'll remove the old cylinder. And I don't know if, if you can see real, real quick in the back, I'm gonna put some of this penetrating oil, PB Buster, just right there in the back of the cylinder in the brake line, hopefully, to kind of loosen up that rust and everything. I'm gonna wait a couple minutes and then we'll try to remove the brake line and then the, uh, then the cylinder. All right, I put the little kind of crow's foot um, like wrench head up there and actually I'm gonna use a little ratchet with one of these kind of joints on it to get some good uh, leverage on it. Let's see if I can get this. It's a very tight fit in here, to be honest. If 
if I can get this in here even. Okay, let's see. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can loosen this up a bit. All right, and as does what happens with older vehicles, since this is a 2000 Jeep Wrangler, it's about 20 years old. The brake line's probably never been replaced or neither the cylinder, I don't even know. But the little end that attaches to the cylinder, the brake line was fused to it, so turning it completely sheared it and broke it, so obviously broke off. So now we're gonna get a lesson in, in kind of changing the whole brake line again. This is exactly what happened yesterday. I was hoping that spraying it, I sprayed it like 10 times, maybe not, maybe like eight times with like uh, the penetrating oil, hopefully to loosen it up. And I wasn't getting it. So it broke off and I'm just gonna replace the whole brake line. Um, yeah, uh, so I had to get these bits and the brake line itself and it connects to, let's see, oh yeah. Up in here, you can see right there, see where that, that brass is? That's yesterday, I had to bend this brake line and put it in for the other side over there. And we're gonna be doing it in today, so I'm gonna take it off, we'll bend it and get a lesson in that and install the new brake line and the new cylinder, then put all the springs and everything and go from there. All right, I just got back from the store, I got myself a length of brake line with the proper fittings on the end, definitely take your cylinder when you go to the store and make sure that it threads into there uh, perfectly. You don't want to have any problems when you get back. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these tools over here, pipe bender, this is like a flare tool and then a pipe cutter. Uh, and I'm going to try to bend, I'm going to bend this new length into a shape similar to this one that will fit um, from uh, kind of it's gonna, it's gonna fit where it used to go. So let's just go ahead and try to bend it the way it goes. All right, now I'm gonna try to bend some of these lengths with this pipe bender right here. Try to give it the same kind of curvature as, um, as this one. Just kind of line this up, let's see if we can. Seems about like that. Bend this down, very good. And this the end, the end bit, looks like it's bent up just a little bit. Let's see if we can do this. Just a little bit, just up. So we're gonna, we're gonna try our best to get this shape. And we can go ahead and finalize everything after. All right, it's pretty decent. Maybe bend this pit up at the end just a little bit more. I don't wanna... Maybe like that. Okay. And let's move down the line. Then take this, let's bend it out just a little bit, I guess. Let's go ahead and do that. Bend it. We're getting there. Then I'm going to bend it downwards. Let's see if we can do this. Bend it downwards. Just like this. Bend it downwards just a little bit. Very good. Need to bend it just a little bit more. Bend it just a little bit more. Okay. This part needs to bend outwards. Bend it like this. Let's see, let's see, let's make sure I'm doing this right. So I have that bit, that bit. Yep, I need to bend this part outwards. Let's do this just like there. Then let's bend this out. It's coming together slowly.
can see the piece is starting to resemble the other one, it's slowly getting there. We go down the line. I don't know if, if uh, I don't know if I have to finagle it a whole bunch more. We'll see. S looks like a slight bend like this. Okay, slight bend here, going this way. Let's do a slight little bend. Slight bend. Let's get this camera cord out of the way. Okay, slight bend, and let's bring it back. Then we're gonna take this bend and bring it back a little bit. Trying to mimic all the little spots. You can see, I'm trying my best to mimic all of the spots. Then it looks like this part as it goes, it bends upwards a little bit. Let's bend it upwards a little bit. Make sure that this little bit is on the end. If you bend the pipe, it won't go around the curves and then you'll be in trouble and you have to use a cutter to cut it and then re kind of uh, flare it. I might not even have to use the cutter or flare tool. This length might be perfect. I got four feet and it looks like honestly it's gonna be a perfect replacement. Next thing I'm gonna do is maybe bend it just a little bit this way and then honestly we're gonna try to fit it in there. <laughs> nope, wrong way, I don't wanna bend it that way. I wanna bend it this way. All right, that looks pretty decent the way it does. Let's get a full overview look of it. I'm very happy with it. Not too hard to use it. I might have to change the end a little bit, but I'll finalize that, I think, once I get it to fit into my vehicle a little bit better. But really not too hard. I got this tool yesterday when I had the same problem on the other brake. It's about like $10, $11, super easy to use. Um, if you're gonna be getting these, you might want to get a one of these tiny little pipe cutters. You tighten it around it and you spin it around until it breaks off. And then this is a flare tool. It kind of gives it the flare end right here so that the bit will catch on it. If not, it'll just fall right off. But yeah, it looks like we're about ready to kind of dry fit it in the vehicle and see, see how it goes. And jump cut after getting in the new uh, brake line, you can see it is the one on the left, this side right there. It is running over, and I'll show you from the other side. Super happy with it, just a couple more final adjustments to do. And uh, where, where are we, what are we looking at? And then we see the brake line. I put it back under that bracket. It's going through this sort of bracket right there. Zoom out brake line comes here and it's right there I'll just have to do a final adjustment final bend to get it to line up with this little bit right here that's what I gotta do but I'm very happy with it and not too long much easier than yesterday so it's not too hard if you have to um, bend and form your own brake line nothing too crazy all right and next I'm gonna do I'm gonna remove the bolts that hold in the cylinder and for me it's just a 10 mil There we 
you go. They're not very long, these bolts. See, they're pretty small. Let's take out the other one. I can line it up real easy. And then the cylinder will literally just come off. See? And then uh, this old cylinder is off. It's time to put on the new one. I did just take off the little bolts and they are a little bit grimy. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just real quick hit them with the wire brush. Definitely want gloves on for this because these brushes can just poke your fingers. Just clean out the threadings just a little bit. And when I do reinstall these, I will be putting on a little bit of some anti-seize thread sealant. Um, or just anti-seize. To keep them easy to come on and off. Very cool. All right, now it's time to put in the new cylinder. I did do a bright clean one more time on this whole area and brush it down with the wire brush just to get off any debris or anything like that. And now we're gonna put in the new cylinder and then go to the next step. First thing I want to do, my anti-seize lubricant. I'm just gonna take a little bit of it I just want to do this, but just, I'm just going to put a little bit, just like the smallest little bit. You don't want to get any near um, any of the where the lines go in. That could be real bad. <clears throat> and then I got my little bolts as well. I'm going to put a, just a touch of the anti-seize as well on the bolt. If I can get on camera, just literally just, just a touch. That's probably too much. I'm going to actually wipe some of that off. On the other one. There we go. Nice little amount of anti seize on each of them. Stand those up. Then, where is my ratchet? I'm going to close the anti seize bottle. Take your cylinder, it, it literally just pops in. It's not too hard. You see the Mickey Mouse ears on there? Uh, they fit the holes. If you can see, it's the left ear. Let's go ahead and put it on there. There we go. Sort of slides in. Just kind of finger thread the first bolt on. We'll tighten it up after. And you definitely want to use a torque wrench for it. For manufacturer specs. Get it to tighten up there. Alrighty. And then, let's see, what do my specs say? Zoom out a bit. We got it loosely in there. Install cylinder mountain bolts and tighten to 10 uh, Newton meters or seven foot pounds. Where is the torque wrench? There we go. So we want to tighten that to the correct length, the correct tightening. So you want to tighten that to 10. Let's set this to 10. Got to unlock it. Scroll this down. Right there, it's set to 10. Golden. Then I'm going to find the correct uh, bit and we'll tighten them down. All right, got my 10 millimeter socket. I have it, the uh, torque wrench set to, where is it, 10. Uh, Newton meters, and I'm going to go ahead and we're going to torque this down nice and tight to correct specs. You can hear the, that means that's the correct tightness. Let's go ahead and do the other side. I can fit it on here, there we go. And that one is done too. This cylinder is now installed. Now for the fun part. I'm going to attach um, the brake hose to it. Okay, now I'm going to tighten or torque to the correct torque specs my kind of brake line. I have to get it to, what does it say here? It says get it to, 
and saw brake line to cylinder tighten to 16 newton meters or 12 foot pounds. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have this attached on here and uh, let's see if we can tighten it. Yesterday when I did the other one, this part is uh, kind of hard. <laughs> it's hard to fit it all in here. Oh, this is actually doing okay. And you just listen for the click. I can do this. We start it. You hear that click? That is it. It is properly torqued. It is stuck on here a little bit. Boom. Very good. Okay, now it's time to. I want to put a little bit of anti-seize on these little contact points right here. Just the smallest amount. You don't want a whole lot on there. Alrighty. Looks pretty good. And now, I'm going to get all of the new brake drum parts and we'll start to put them on. Oh boy. And now we're at the part where you're definitely going to want to reference your old uh, brake drums and your pictures. Or if you need to, if you're in a real big pinch, you can take off your other tire, do them one at a time so you can reference the other side of your vehicle as well. I'm going to take this sort of part right here and I'm going to put some anti seize all over it. This completely screws all the way out. I might have to move the camera. We'll see how it goes. Just going to put a little bit of anti seize. Just to keep it nice and nice and unseized inside of there. Looks like there's a little bit of grease already. It'll be okay. And then just screw it back into itself. And the excess will probably squeeze out a bit and it'll help it push it up the threads. This is the part that once your brake uh, pads wear down, it'll tighten, push them out a little bit. And I got some stuff on me. You don't want to get this on your brake pads themselves. So towel, wipe everything off. All right. I'm also going to put a little bit of anti-seize on this bit right here. There you go. Got a little bit of anti-seize on there. Very nice. Wipe off the excess. Cool. And we want to reference the other brake drums. I'm actually going to, I got some anti-seize all over this glove. I'm going to take off my glove for a minute and see what we can do. I might have to move the camera over a little bit, just like that. Okay. You will have to reuse this part right here. Let's see. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to try to mimic this bottom part down here the pieces flying everywhere okay so I know that I'm gonna definitely need many towels I want this to go in this bottom part down here and this one goes into here and you don't want to handle the edges of the brake pads too much so I'm just gonna try to stick to the inside I will grab more towels momentarily I know that this bit slides on this metal part down here like so Keep my camera right here hopefully you're catching all this on camera well I know that um, this brown spring right here if we can see in here goes like this so let's go ahead and tension this up a little bit where's it go it goes from here to it would help if um, I had this pad on the correct way. There you go. Always check which way the pads are facing. So here to here. There you go. Got that string. A little bit of tension on there just to kind of hold it together a little bit. Make it a little bit easier before I put it on uh, the actual rotor. And then this spring um, goes like this. Like this. I forgot it actually... Okay, let's see this. 
you put the spring on first, spring like this. If I can do this, the spring goes, I can, this is very hard to do with one hand. I'm gonna see if I can set the camera down. Okay, there we go. So the spring pushes like that. You put this bit here and up, and then you take this tensioner and right over there. And then when this is all lined up correctly, did I put this on the wrong way? I did put it on the wrong way. I must take out this silver bit and flip it around. Okay, like this, like this. There you go, because uh, these have to line up the teeth in here. It only It's only allowed to turn one way. I'm gonna put this spring on again. Oh yeah. springs are tough. All right, so this part's looking pretty decent. I'm gonna go wash my hands real quick, move on to the next part. Okay, now we're gonna go on to the next part. I'm gonna actually take this and place it on the drum itself. It looks like we have a small visitor. <laughs> Let's see. So take this. All right, now, Take these pads and sort of loosely put them on here. Let's see if we can line it up a little bit better. Things will fall into place. bad. Next thing I want to do, I'm going to put in this sort of crossbar here. Make sure that it fits in real nice. And, um, actually the emergency brake uh, is supposed to fit up top. It fits in this little bit up top. If you can see right there the emergency brake uh, metal part kind of slides into that hole and then this should fit into those spaces very loosely fit right there next thing I want to do I want to get in these springs so there's the hole in the back if you can see, let's flip around the back. If I can see, where is it? Right here, there's a hole. You go ahead, you stick it through. Let's go around to the front, see what's going on. Let's keep this camera from falling. And it should poke through the hole. If you can see, it's poking through that hole right here. We gotta go grab a tool and put it on there. Okay, so we're gonna line it up, put it through the hole. See it pops out. Well, it should pop out right here. Take this spring. We're gonna line it up the best we can. Grab this tool, push it through, and then turn. You can see it locked into place. We can adjust that a little bit later. I'm gonna go ahead and do it to the other side as well. See if I can do it without moving too much. Take the hole in the back, you push it through, the spring in the cap. Grab this. This totally fell out, this part. We'll worry about that in a moment. Hopefully we don't have to take it off again. In there, ooh, ooh, ooh. piece is falling. I'm gonna move the bucket I learned from yesterday. <laughs> I dropped it in there so many times. Okay, let's take this, just like that. Got this special push down tool. 
line it up. Let's see, let's see. I can do this easily. There you go, and they are locked into place. Very cool. Next thing I wanna do, see if I can get this bar back into place. Over here, it's supposed to lock in. Let me see if I can get it. This yellow spring. There we go. You can see it locked into place there. Take these pads and push them together. Very good. Now, what I want to do is put on the little tensioner bit. Okay, so I'm going to take the little tensioner line, you place it over this little hole right here. And what you want to do, you want to grab one of your springs. For, you got your springs, and I have this like bracket right here. This line actually goes around this bracket once I get it on there. So I'm gonna just set it to the side. There is this hole. Let's see if I can get this on camera well. Bear with me. There is this hole right here. That's where the butt of the spring goes. So you kind of put it in there. And then this has to be pulled over there. And I'm gonna be grabbing some pliers for that. Okay, now I wanna take this spring and pull it over here. Oh yeah. Oh. Boom. Not too bad. That is in there and it holds the brakes on there. I'm gonna take my other spring. If you can see on the other side, Oh man, this, uh, I don't know what's on there. Fits in this hole. You can do it. And then let's go ahead and pull it that way. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Nope. Definitely wear safety goggles for this. Is lots of pressure going on with these springs. They are strong. And this actually slipped out of place a bit. There we go. Oh man, this is gonna be tough, this one. I need a, I don't know why. I forget about this. I actually have a tool for this. for this. Oh, totally stuck on itself. Okay. Take this, grab it. Let's anchor this on something else. It's hard to do this with the camera here. There we go. On this bit right here. Pull it. This, uh, yeah, that's right. Grab this, put this on there. Boom. 
boom. Ah, helps if you have something like this. You don't necessarily need it though. We're gonna make sure those springs are nice and seated on there. And just do one little spin. They seem to be on there pretty good. Wrap this around. And this green part actually goes right here. Let's see, this green part, you pull it after it goes around, after the wire goes around that metal bracket sort of thing. You pull this and it goes onto there. Easier said than done. Ugh. Definitely gonna have to pull that pretty hard. Okay, now let's get this tensioner part on this. And this part is not easy. Ugh, how can I do this easily? Probably can't. Come on. Nope, it's close, but Stuck on. <laughs> Aha! I got it on there. Holy! What a process. Drum brakes are fun brakes. Alrighty. It looks like we got all of the parts in there. We got uh, the tensioner. It's going around this sort of metal bracket right here. It is attached to this sort of the tensioner part, this kind of, you can see, it can click upwards to kind of tighten itself. As the brakes wear out, they will push out. I have the spring down here pushing on this part right here. I have the metal kind of crossbar with the yellow spring right here. I got the two white parts as well. Got the new cylinder in there. It looks like we're golden. We finally got all the springs inside the drum brakes. It wasn't too hard. The hardest part is honestly breaking the brake line and having to replace that. Next thing I want to do, I'm going to throw on the um, the drum brake uh, itself, and then uh, tighten it up, put my tire on, and that should be the job. Very cool. All right, and you want to make sure that these are all lined up here and in the correct spot. So just double check that this bar is in the right spot. All right, now I'm going to take the hub. Like I said, I didn't paint it. And I painted with um, high temperature paint. It was actually caliper paint. It's a little bit too tight. So something's got to shift around a little bit. Let's see, let's see. Let me try it again, actually. And I want to see how freely it spins. I'm actually going to jack up. Be cool again. There we go. Let's see how it spins. All righty. Not too bad. Sure. All right. Next thing I want to do, put on my sort of hub. All right. I'm going to put on my little adapter thing and I'm going to be tightening down everything to 100 foot pounds. Get the little ones, little guys. Let's just get them started. Three, four. These little ones.
I like to get them started by hand first. Then I will be torquing everything down with the larger torque wrench. And then the other one, where did it go? Just rolled on the ground in front of me. Where did it go? Okay, got this one. Let's tighten it up a bit. Let's do this one first. This one, this one, this one, and this one. And I'm gonna grab the torque wrench and I'm gonna torque everything down. Okay, tighten it down. There we go. Let's do this one. No, I did that one. This one. Click. Do this one. Let's do this one. Let's do from over here. And lastly, this one. No, I did that one. I think I did them all. Yeah. Okay, it came out. Come on now. Yeah, that's uh, that's all of them. Next, I'm gonna put the tire on and tighten those up to 100 foot pounds. Alrighty, I got the tire on. Now I'm gonna slowly put on these bolts. I do like these magnetic trays to hold bolts and stuff. I, I I'm fond of them. I'm just gonna hand thread them on first. There's a little bit of on this one, a little bit of dust or something. Ooh, it just keeps rolling away. Hand tighten them first, just a little bit. Let's get the threading started. And got the lock nut as well. And then this one. Okay, let's grab a bit from the torque wrench, and this, put the tire on, there we go, I'm going to use this, a special bit, tighten this up a little bit, and let's torque these down to the correct specs. Let's do the this one first because I'm not a huge fan of these. One. And you want to do these in like kind of a star pattern. Just do opposite from each other. Two. Three, four, five. There we go, the tire's on. The next thing we gotta do, we gotta bleed the line and then we call it a day. All right, now we wanna bleed um, the brake of all the air. I got this little homemade bleeder thing. It's got a tube in it. We're gonna take this tube and pop it in up here. There we go. Nope. There you go, it's in there. So what we want to do, we want to loosen, loosen it. And then I'm gonna go step on the brakes and this should fill up and you should see it uh, go. Hopefully my vehicle's open. Let me see. Let's 
see what does it look like. I want to do a little bit more. I think I actually need to put in some brake fluid first, so I'm going to do that because I think a bunch of it dripped out when I replaced the line, so give me a moment. Alright, I just filled up the brake reservoir with fluid because it was pretty low. I'm going to pump the brakes and then tighten the valve. Alrighty, it's a pretty solid stream and I'm going to tighten it. Nice and till it's good and tight. One little bit more, if I can get it on there. Boom. Pop this off. Replace the cap on. And then your brakes are bled. Beautiful. Well, there you have it. That's how you replace your drum brakes, the springs, the cylinder, and even a little bit of the brake line. I wasn't expecting the brake line, but sometimes it happens. Anyways, I really hope this video was of help to you or interest to you or at least showed you something new or maybe you learned something or helped you when you're doing your own drum brakes. And I just want to say thanks for stopping by. Have a beautiful, wonderful day. Stay positive, and I'll catch you on the next one.